So this was an interesting story that um, I found that uh, was actually Jimmy Dore. It was on Jimmy Dore's uh, page. And this was really funny because we live in a world where progressives um, pretty regularly get a better, fairer, more open shake on Fox News than on MSNBC or CNN. And so what we're about to watch is Jimmy Dore, who is blackballed from the Democratic Party, blackballed from MSNBC, blackballed from CNN, going on Tucker Carlson's show and actually getting the ability to speak. And you, take a look for yourself, guys. We still don't have the full numbers from the Iowa caucus, but the results so far, the ones we've been given, indicate a narrow lead for Pete Buttigieg, who was once a mayor of a minor city in the Midwest. A big win for the little mayor? Not so fast. Buttigieg's campaign had close financial ties to Shadow. That's a tech company that completely screwed up the results on Monday. And then this, today, Iowa Democrats were caught, apparently mistakenly, giving hundreds of Bernie Sanders votes to total non-entities like Tom Steyer and Deval Patrick. You add it all up and you begin to wonder, are people trying to stop Bernie? A lot of Bernie supporters think they are. Wouldn't be a surprise, actually. Democratic insiders in the press have made it clear they'll do almost anything to deny Sanders the nomination. Jimmy Dore is one of the very rare independent thinkers on the internet, one of the last left. He's got a podcast, he's a comedian, we're happy to have last him join left. us tonight. Jimmy, thanks so much for coming on. Come on. <laughs> My pleasure, thanks for having me. I, I'm not a conspiracy guy, I don't think I'm paranoid, but I just looking at the accumulation of facts, which grows larger every day, I'm starting to think there's a real effort, not in public, but behind the scenes to prevent Bernie Sanders from getting the nomination by the Democratic establishment. Am I imagining that? Uh, you are not imagining that. No, you know what, Tucker, when I look at what's happening in the Democratic primary, and especially what just is happening right now in Iowa, uh, what I think is not only is democracy alive, but it's thriving. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, that's a good point. You no, know, it's, it's, this is really, of course, this is the DNC. Uh, right, by the way, they took over the counting of the votes. Did you know that? That they took over the counting of the votes. The DNC came in. Apparently, they don't have anybody who knows how to count stuff in Iowa, so they have to have the DNC come in. I don't know if you know the DNC rigged the last primary against I did Bernie Sanders. That. <laughs> yeah, so those are the same people who, and by the way, the same people who rigged the primary against Bernie last time are the ones involved in making this app, right? So they got a bunch of Hillary, people who worked on Hillary's campaign that work now at Shadow, and they helped build this app. And all of a sudden, and you know, here's the thing, Tucker. And, you know, I've seen Glenn Greenwald make this point before, is that if these were honest mistakes, you would expect some of the mistakes to go in Bernie's favor and some That's of the right. mistakes to go in the DNC's favor. But all exactly. the mistakes are always going in the establishment's favor. So that's how you that's how you know this. These aren't mistakes. This isn't. And by the way, when they release those say 62 percent of the vote, they're going to release those results. How did they decide to stop at 62 percent? Where's the transparency? Why did they pick those counties? How exactly. does it? There is no transparency. Exactly. This is obviously how are they going to cheat Bernie? This is how they do it, because if you know what the headline was all day yesterday and today on cable news and CNN and MSNBC is Pete Buttigieg is Brian in the Forsen lead. In. He's retaining his lead. And that's the story they want everybody to know. And that's what half the country now thinks is that Pete Buttigieg won Iowa. But the, so, so there's so many levels of irony here, but here's, I'm just picking this out of my head, here's one. Some of the same people who are regurgitating this propaganda, who are counting the votes in Iowa, are the same ones who spent the last three years telling us that Russia was subverting our democracy and that the sanctity of elections was the most important thing in American life. Are you noticing this? I am noticing that. Apparently, Russia, Russians work for shadow. And they run the uh, Iowa Democratic Party, apparently, because so, yeah, of course, you know, I was one of the few shows that Jimmy. debunked Russiagate and saw wrong. through that. And, you know, that's a common this is this is all kind of tied together because yeah. Russiagate is a result of the failure of the Democratic Party to present a platform that it that gets people who want to vote Democrat off the couch to vote for them. So they can't actually offer them anything because they're beholden to their donors. The same people who control the Republican Party control the Democratic Party. We don't True. really have 
have two parties, right? So they have to do Russia Gate and impeachment and all these side sh these circus shows, right? To so distract you from the fact that the Democratic Party doesn't represent workers anymore, that they actually represent big pharma, health insurance, the military industrial complex, and Wall Street. And that's why all this is happening. And that's why they have to cheat Bernie Sanders, because he's going to upset their game, their money game. And that's why they got to stop him before. The first job of the Democratic Party is to stop the candidate who represents the workers and then and only then can they turn their attention towards Donald Trump. Yep. So is maybe is that why we never have debates about the tax code? We spend a lot of time on bathrooms, we spend a lot of time on, on these kind of peripheral social issues, but so I can't remember the last time someone talked about carried interest, can you? Yep. Yep. Tucker, as, they, as Nancy Pelosi is ripping up Donald Trump's speech, she's passing his legislative agenda. So as, And also, if you, got, if you watched closely last night, you got to see her applaud Donald Trump's imperialism when it comes vis-a-vis -vis of Venezuela, oh, right? So and I know you did good part. work on Venezuela. We all Glad know these foreign entanglements point. are just I'm CIA plots to steal resources and give it to American corporations. They admitted so much. John Bolton admitted on Fox News that that's what Venezuela was. So you saw the one-party rule last night. You saw Nancy Pelosi uh, uh, applauding and getting up with Juan Guaido, who is a CIA-appointed puppet leader of the Venezuela. So you saw that's, that's the part I like to call out. That's when they're both in bed with the intelligence community. They're both in bed with the military industrial complex. And that was, and so, yeah, you're right. We're not talking about real things. No. We're talking about Russia. We we're are. talking about we a phone are. to the Ukraine. We're never going to, we're never going to talk about why wouldn't the Democrats had complete control of the government. They gave us a right wing health care plan anyway. Oh, maybe it's because <laughs> there aren't really two parties. There's one Tucker party like in America that. and they're both controlled yeah. by big business. Grin Jimmy there. Dore, you're going to take so much abuse for doing this show, but I hope you'll come back. Too few independent thinkers in this world. Thank you. Jimmy Dore, okay, Chicago's my pleasure. Very own. There we go. Chicago's very own good friend of the show, too. He's been on our show a few times. I've had the privilege of interviewing Jimmy Dore, I think, on three separate occasions. And, well, he's going to be coming back to the Chicago. We'll probably get to talk to him again. Yeah, we're well, going to make that happen. Out. We're going to definitely make that happen. But, Daniel, you know, I, I, you know, when we hear somebody like Jimmy Dore on corporate media, it's refreshing because he brought up some interesting points. One, we live in a single-party system. The Republican establishment and Democratic establishment, they're friends with each other. I'm going to keep saying it again. And to, to diehard Republican voters and diehard Democratic voters, you're being played along. The Clintons know the Trumps. The Trumps know the Obamas. And every single political establishment elite that's within the RNC and DNC, they are friends and they're beholden to the top 1%. Wall Street, big banks, major corporations, and to those people who really think that the Senate and House actually do their job, 90% of their job is really being on the phone and talking to their donors. So when Jimmy Dore's on, on Fox News, of all places, he's finally bringing their viewers an idea of just how corrupt and inept our system is. Daniel. So this is what I was saying before, that it's crazy that Jimmy Dore can have a warm reception like that to those ideas, to that type of a topic. On Fox News, that if he was on ABC, if he was on NBC, which again, he was blackballed from, same with CNN, they would immediately be interrupting him, telling him that he's wrong, oh, that's not true, even though it is. But how is it that we live in an era where Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, Bernie Sanders, Jimmy Dore, et cetera, et cetera, maybe with the exception of AOC, maybe a little bit there, because they seem to not like AOC on uh, Fox News. But how are they getting a fair shake on Fox News? What does it say about Fox News? Man, that doesn't really say much because we know what Fox News is. We know exactly that they're propaganda. But what does it say about MSDNC, about CNN, when the fair shake for progressives is on Fox? Yeah. So uh, there's, here's a – let's try to dissect that a little bit because Tucker Carlson is really the only person on Fox that you're going to hear this type of sort of – candor from right he's the only pundit on fox news on any mainstream news that will take on topics like hey is what the government telling us about what happened in syria actually correct look at these opcw whistleblower reports he's the only one in the mainstream press who's reported on that at all he's the only one that expressed any amount of skepticism in uh juan guaido and what's going on in venezuela he tends to express these kind of isolationist conservative perspectives regarding uh, foreign policy, and he's the only one. Well, why is he allowed to do that? Well, to me, it seems like he's allowed to do that because he's so obviously wrong on other things, right? He's also the guy that's pushing the white nationalist agenda and doing dog whistly racist things all the time and talking about building that wall and all the 
immigrants are taking your jobs. Like he's obviously wrong on that point and to almost to the point of being cartoonishly laughable that I think he's a safe mouthpiece to have the sort of anti-imperialism, uh, isolationist, conservative dove uh, foreign policy perspectives come from because he's seen as not really a threat because he's the obviously wrong guy all the time. He's the white nationalist, you know, build the wall guy who never says anything correct. So we're allowed to have him say these things because we people will obviously take it as being obviously incorrect. And because he's the only person who says things like that, he's the only person who is going to be able to have Jimmy Dore on or Tulsi Gabbard on or Abby Martin on. And then that gives or Glenn Greenwald on. Mm -hmm. And that gives license to the centrist hawks to say, oh, they went on the show with the white nat nationalists that always does the dog whistly things. That means that they're white nationalists and they don't actually care about reducing the military footprint or drawing back our presence in the Middle East or being a more peaceful, more diplomatic uh, country. They, 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 none of that matters. None of those talking points matter. The only thing that matters is they talked to a guy who has white nationalist talking points, and therefore everything that they say is wrong. So okay. I just want to add really quickly in all this that RT also had Jimmy Dore guest host on their network. Yeah, he did it for like yeah. a week. So the, it's such a weird world where the only place that will give Jimmy Dore with an enormous audience, much bigger than many shows on MSDNC or CNN, a actual seat, not just a guest interview, is the Russian uh, state news. The second place for most access is... Uh, this specific host on Fox News, and then it's just blank everywhere else. There's there's something else I want to say before we move on. You know, as a Chicagoan, I'm really proud of Jimmy Dore because he's come a long way. I remember watching when he used to be on TYT and when he had his own show, uh, Aggressive Progressive. I remember that. And it was really great seeing how far Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore has grown, not only as a commentator, but as a comedian and someone who's been keeping up the good fight. And I want everyone to remember this, that during the height of the 2016 primary, when the election fraud was clear and visible to all, he was one of the few clear voices that was able to call to hypocrisy of the DNC establishment, basically saying that, yes, the DNC is committing election fraud. He was the one telling all of us that, no, you're not crazy. You're not some lunatic. You're absolutely correct that the DNC is committing election fraud, that the establishment are all friends with each other, and that, yes, we all should be upset, and, yes, we should all rally and fight for a better future, and we should get angry. Jimmy Dore has come a long way, and I'm proud of him. Now, of course, Fox News has its problems, but guess what? For that one moment in time, Jimmy Dore was able to inform those Fox News viewers about how corrupt our system is. So way to represent Chicago, Jimmy. We like you here at Hard Lens Media. Looking forward to seeing your show here in August. And I want to read a super chat real quick super before we chat, move on to uh, Jimmy. Uh, I was going to call you Jimmy. I'm Paul. Jimmy. No, I was going to move on hey, to Paul. Hi, everyone. I'm Jimmy. I screwed that up. Wow. Uh, shout out to Mark for the su uh, $5 super chat. Progressives should stop patronizing MSNBC advertisers to end bias. Help make it happen. Spread the word. Stop Chuck Todd from moderating the debate. And yes, Let's do that. You because Chuck Todd has no business moderating anything. He called Bernie Sanders supporters, progressives, and independents a digital brown shirt brigade, basically mm -hmm. saying he's afraid of us. Oh, Chuck Todd, are you afraid of the fact that people are criticizing you on social media? We get criticized all the time. But I guess because your little paper wall is starting to fall apart, it turns yeah. out that you're not this big, tough tiger. You're a paper tiger. So here's something I want to add to people. Because this actually is more effective than you might think. If you're a, someone that uh, is used to writing for places or like writing to congressmen and stuff, find all the advertisers for MSNBC and just write an email to each of them. You know, do a little customizing for each one, make sure it's a little tailored, and just say, hey, I don't support your brand when you align with people that call progressive, to call Jewish people uh, that had their families taken out in the Holocaust brown shirts. I don't support you. Make a tweet on Twitter. Because one thing that we've learned is that advertisers, regardless of the situation, do not like this kind of press. So if enough people, every time this happens, start complaining about Chuck Todd, at some point, something might happen. It's a pretty good yeah. point. I've, I've emailed MSNBC before. 
But told MS- them that they've lost yeah, a viewer. Yeah. Told them yeah. that you know I don't like Rachel Maddow. But the Maddow only thing that MSN XYZ. cares more yeah. about losing their own reputation is losing their money. Yeah, advertisers. So. Yeah. Talk, advertisers. Talk to the advertisers yeah. again. Tweet, tweet about it. If, tell, if, tell advertisers if to drop the them. The that, apocalypse can happen because the Wall Street Journal made stuff up about PewDiePie. Yeah. Then we can. Then Chuck Todd can take a hit. Yeah, let's and be real. Let's face it. Well, actually, you know what? Chuck Todd can't take any hits. He can't take digital criticism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's. Yeah. He, I mean, it's worse than that. It's one thing to take a real physical punch in the face. It's one thing to get some verbal criticism. Well, that's but, what Fredo but, does. That's but, Fredo's but, thing. But but you know, for 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 di- for someone who's supposed to be a media pundit, who's supposed to represent himself as a journalist, he's failing miserably at it. And you know, it's it just says a lot about who Chuck Todd is and how he's able to basically smear Bernie Sanders' supporters. Everyone should be upset and angry. 